Happy New Year. Great to be back in the saddle with you tonight. Tonight's top story, could North Dakota's economy be headed for a recession in 2016? And obviously, what could that possibly mean for you and your family? Good evening and welcome to 630 Point of View. I'm Chris Berg. Thanks so much for joining us. You may remember back in mid-December, Moody's Analytics came out with a report that said North Dakota could be headed for a full-blown recession in large part due to plummeting oil prices. With Iran soon dumping about a million barrels per day on the market, slow economic news coming out of China today, and a myriad of other variables, it does not look like oil prices are going to be turning around anytime soon. Also, according to the most recent revenue report for the state, total revenues are below forecast by almost 9%. I know it doesn't sound like that much of a deal, but if oil prices continue to plummet as they have been, doesn't look like we're going to be closing that gap anytime soon. So tomorrow, Tax Commissioner Ryan Rauschenberger and the president of the North Dakota Petroleum Council, Ron Ness, they're going to be speaking at the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chambers Eggs and Issues event about how oil prices impact the great state of North Dakota and what does this all mean for the economic outlook for 2016 here in our state. Now, both these gentlemen join us tonight right here in studio. Both you guys, thanks so much for being here in studio in Fargo. It's great to have you here. So, Ryan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, is Moody Analytics correct in saying, hey, we're headed towards a full-blown recession? Well, uh, first, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, it's great to be here. And I, I think that Moody's, um, one thing we have to look at when we talk about a recession is look at where we've come from. You know, recession basically means that we aren't, our economy isn't growing anymore. But <clears> we have to look at how many years and quarters we've grown by these massive 20, 30, 40 percent years. And I report that every year with the taxable sales and purchases. And I think we have to look at that. Even if we do dip this year, you have to look at where we've come in. You know, since like 2010, we've grown by 70 percent in our sales tax base. That's so, so important to um, look at the long term growth that we've had in this state and how much of that we're retaining, even if we do decline slightly. We've grown a lot as far as obviously revenues and whatnot and taxable sales and things. We've also grown our budget quite a bit. So with that being said, again, is Moody's accurate in saying, hey, we could be going towards a recession with the current spending levels? Well, you know, um, it's a good point when you mentioned the <clears> spending <throat> levels and given that um, you look at our general fund budget is about $6 billion in North Dakota. About a billion of that is one-time spending. So if you ratchet back um, the one-time spending, which uh, uh, has gone out there for roads, water projects, uh, a lot of these infrastructure um, projects that we've had across the state, it's important to recognize that those aren't recurring ongoing general fund revenues like our agency that has a budget that keeps going. Uh, but I, I think it's important to recognize that that doesn't have to reoccur. And right there, that's a billion dollars of general fund mm. spending that doesn't have to occur in the 1719 biennium. And that's something to keep in mind when, when we're budgeting for the next so session. So when you look at budgets, you look at the spreadsheets, um, you know, sales tax is off by more than 25% compared to forecast. Uh, corporate taxes are down. When you start to look at all, the inf all this information, is there anything or what specifically really pops out and goes, whoa, that could really be a problem for us? Well, as you mentioned right now, sales tax um, is something that we're looking at. Sales tax is by far the number one general fund um, uh, revenue source that we have in North Dakota. That is that is really what we call kind of the, the cash cow. That is something that has continues to come in. That's retail. That uh, comes from um, you know, oil production, all the materials, but it's because of that, it's it's fluctuated a lot because we have prices of uh, inputs out in the Bakken that have come down, also fewer materials get going into the ground because of fewer rigs operating. So it's it's important to notice that sales tax <coughs> used to kind of be more of a, what we call like a steady eddy kind of a, of a revenue resource, but it has a little more fluctuation in it because it is, uh, it isn't as retail based as it used to be and it has more to deal with some business inputs compared to what it used to be say a decade ago. And great lead into you is, I mean, you're obviously studying this business uh, a lot. I mentioned Iran putting more money soon on the uh, oil, I should say, on the market. You have slow economic growth in, in China, I meaning there's not as great a demand for oil. Uh, with what he just said about, hey, look, and I think you even said in, in, uh, the oil, you know, when they go and, and plug the ground or whatnot, open the ground up, it's like 40 jobs. What do you see coming down the pipe in 2016 for our economy here in North Dakota? Well, first, Chris, um, I saw a report today that says on average North Dakotans put about an extra $550 in our pockets because of lower gas prices. I don't think anybody can deny that because of the technologies we've developed here in North Dakota to develop oil shale resources, we've grown the production in the U.S. Now, 
most of us would contend that maybe we've got a little bit too much supply and the prices have overcorrected too much. But we think 2016 <clears> is going to be a tough year. There's just absolutely no question if you talk to anybody in the ag business, anybody in the energy business, you have a strong dollar. You have Iran coming on to the markets. Yes, we've passed the oil exports, eliminated the oil exports ban, but it, it's really about <clears throat> supply and demand in the world. We're now a world player. Uh, those things have a direct impact on North Dakota, and uh, we're going to expect less revenues, I think, uh, on, a, on a daily basis, on an annual basis, and we're going to have to prioritize for that budget next session. So let's talk about the oil export ban. It's clear that sounded like a big win for our state, but as you just mentioned, when you look at the supply glut, and then mm -hmm. you saw it today, it was last night, Saudi Arabia and Iran are now parting ways. They may get into a, you know, quote-unquote oil price race. They're going to try to outdo each other there, which will continue to keep prices low, is the oil export ban really even that big of a deal? Because if we're not taking oil out of the ground, there's really nothing to export. Well, we've already seen a difference on the oil export ban. And what has happened is the world price <clears throat> and the price we get in North Dakota have somewhat normalized. So we're already getting a dollar or two dollars. Now, we need about twenty-five dollars to more to make the, make the math really work in the Bakken. But uh, in the long term, we're assured that if we grow production in the Bakken, we know it's a world-class resource. We're going to have a market for that oil, and we're not, not going to get discounted by U.S. refiners who can buy products from, from OPEC or other nations when we can't export our products. So for North Dakota, it, it's really an, an assurance that we get a fair price for, for a good quality, high quality product. So when you look out into the future, if you were going to read the tea leaves, and again, assuming, I know you never know about the Middle East, what's going to happen there, but with all the supply gut that we currently have, and knowing that because of that supply gut, we're still keeping a bunch of oil in the ground. These shale guys aren't producing as much as they once were. When do you see the price starting to turn around and get maybe above 50 or even back to that $70 mark? Well, I, I look really in the box, and I think that we've been able through, through cost efficiencies and things like <clears throat> that, lower our economic price to maybe $60 a barrel now. If we, if we can net $60 a barrel uh, on a Bakken barrel, I think the math works. And I don't see any indications in the first half of 2016. I don't see many indications in the second half of 16. And every month that we go and we get more rigs, we drop below 60 drilling rigs today. A year ago we were at 186. Uh, it gets, the recovery time gets longer because we lose quality people. Now, uh, to Ryan's point, we're still producing 1.1 million barrels of oil. pre and we weren't even producing 100,000 barrels of oil. So the economic drivers, it still takes 60,000 60, people to produce that oil every day. So we've, we've lost on the production side, the exploration side. Those jobs, have, you know, maybe 20,000 jobs have gone away on the exploration side. But every day we're adding new rigs or new wells. Those wells take people. So still a lot of economics going on. It's just that we, we've got to compete. And we're in, a, we're in a war in the world right now in the terms of energy supply. And uh, North Dakota's in the middle of it. A couple of quick questions for you, Ryan. I'll start with you. When, when, if you're the average family sitting at home watching the show right now in your living room, maybe having dinner, what's the most important thing they should be aware of as they see oil prices going down and the impact it's going to have on North Dakota's economy? Well, I think, you know, primarily we talk, there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, the oil tax in North Dakota. I think it's important to recognize that even as we're, you know, at $36 NYMEX today, and, but production is uh, keeping at that 1.1 million barrels per day. That's important. Production is actually maintaining. And even at that lower price, you know, we're going to collect still maybe $4 billion this biennium in this 24-month period. It might have been $8 billion if we'd be at, you know, $80. But, you know, still $4 billion is, is a lot of money. And I think it's important to understand that uh, about half of all the oil tax, the gross production and extraction tax, goes to water projects, constitutional funds like um, educational funds. Uh, and, and that's important for people to know that these dollars aren't just there to spend, but they're tied up constitutionally for the whole state to benefit. Well, from. I think what's fascinating with what you just said is you said, hey, it's going to generate $4 billion. Our budget was six. One time spending was a billion. At least with us five. That's a net loss of a billion dollars. My question for you is can we continue to do the uh, property tax buy down? with this kind of oil price? Well, I think what's, um, uh, and, and again, that's a very good point in that uh, right now property taxes are primarily delivered through general fund uh, appropriations <clears throat> to education. That's a per pupil payment that's, that's in law. And essentially, um, that means that it's priority number one. That's general fund spending, that's education spending. Uh, it isn't really a property tax buy down anymore. It's essentially capping local mills 
for an exchange for a higher per pupil payment. And uh, essentially that has been prioritized. The legislature, um, I, that'll be up to them to continue to fund that. But that's law now, it doesn't sunset. Um, to me, that means that that's a, a huge priority, and I know it is for the legislature to continue keeping those mill levels. I know, but I, I got a big priority to go to, my, to Maui, too. It doesn't mean I have the money to do it right, right now. So last question for you. I got a minute left, and I'll give you the last word. Um, talk about the importance quickly of the fact that we changed the oil extraction tax. There was obviously a huge consternation during the session about that, good thing or bad thing, that now that's been done. Well, certainly short term for the oil industry, it's costing us about a million dollars a day today. Uh, because of the tax change that went into effect on December 1. But long term, you want predictability. The Bakken is a huge economic machine. You need to attract capital from all over the, all over the world to make it work. <clears throat> and this fluctuating tax rate of 130%, it didn't work out very well for us right now. At 30 million a month, I, it's 365 million a year, by the way. And the last time that trigger went on, it was on for 17 years. But I think in the long term, you've got to know where you're at from a business standpoint, from an investment standpoint. Uh, <clears throat> six months from now, this will be the tax rate going forward. Uh, we'll pay more, we'll pay less, uh, but it, it's more predictable for the state and certainly for education, for water. Those people have to know if that trigger had gone on, they'd be getting zero extraction taxes today. To both you guys, thank you very much. Appreciate you being in studio. We'll have you back, okay? Thank you. Again, thank you. there'll be tomorrow morning eggs and issues for the Fargo Board, West Fargo Chamber. Just should to Ron say, hey, it's costing his industry. $30 million a month, essentially also, if this thing wouldn't have been passed, I think it's a very important to note, it would be costing the state $30 million a month. You remember the consternation about changing this oil extraction tax? Sounds like, at least for the state, it ended up being a good thing. Go check those guys out tomorrow morning. Coming up next, when we come back, story about Grand Forks possibly housing unaccompanied minors from Mexico and Central America. Good idea or bad idea? We'll discuss right after this. Love to know your thoughts, obviously, in the upcoming budget as well. You can join our conversation. Text us, email us. We're going to get to your points of view at the end of the show.